Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray for us. Sin. Sin. Now we are our dead. Please be seated. You know, one of the prayers uh, that is often on the lips of every faithful still here on earth, the faithful on the way, in this valley of tears is what eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. You see, when we say the faithful, what do we mean? We mean someone who is validly baptized, believes and professes the integral teaching of Jesus Christ as taught by his mystical body, the Catholic Church, one who participates in Catholic sacraments and acknowledges the lawful pastors of the church. It is funny sometimes to see those who do not believe in purgatory to be praying for um, those who are dead. Well, if, if there's no place called purgatory, either the person is in heaven or in hell, and if he's in any of these places, he doesn't need your prayer. You don't need to say rest in peace because either he's in hell burning or he's in heaven already resting in peace. He doesn't need your prayer. But it is that ridiculous for those who refuse to accept the true faith. Now, how is a faithful who, while here on earth, how is he to merit eternal rest? How is a faithful to be led to the Easter of eternity? From the prophet Isaiah in today's lesson, lesson for today's Mass, we see that to merit eternal rest, a faithful must build up places that have been left desolate in his life, in his Christian journey, raise up the foundation. Here we speak of foundation of prayer and devotion, repair the fences. You can speak of the fences of diligence and watchfulness. And what? Turn away his feet from the violation of holy observances. And for a faithful not to do his own ways or his own will in opposition to those of our divine master. This is how a faithful must strive to merit eternal rest. So all of this, as it were, describe a continuous striving to achieve amendment of life and a Christian perfection through suitable piety and unmolested devotion, as we said a few days ago. Now, anyone desiring eternal rest must, as it were, meet its terms and conditions. He must be a faithful, first of all, that is, a member of the mystical body of Christ, and not just any kind of member, but one with a living faith, such faith which produces many good works that are pleasing to God. And what, dear faithful, we should take this to heart that we may walk now, now that we have the opportunity to merit that eternal rest which is in heaven. God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.